Towards the end of most Formula 1 seasons, you start to see hints of how the cars will be changing for the following year. There are a few technical regulation changes for the new season as well, which are actually going to make big changes to how the cars are designed. With 2022 now wrapped up, we think it's time to start looking ahead. So today, we'll break down what is changing in 2023, what it means for the team's designs, and what innovation we've already seen. A lot happened in the last few races that were specifically aimed at 2023, so stick around to get up to date on what to expect next year. There were always going to be issues with a huge number of changes to the technical regulations in 2022. These rules may have been in the works for years, but when you have 10 teams, composed of some of the most innovative designers in the world, they're always going to find things that the FIA missed. The Aston Martin rear wing is a perfect example of this, which was definitely not in the spirit of the regulations. Some things the teams found by accident though, such as the porpoising. Not all the teams were affected by this and some definitely found it a bigger problem than others. Now, at the end of the season, it's no longer a talking point, but Mercedes' failure to deal with the problem earlier in the season meant the FIA had to make changes for 2023. When the biggest team in the sport is so vocal about something, it makes it very hard to ignore. Though if the FIA had ignored Mercedes' complaints, the teams wouldn't have to deal with some technical regulation changes that now appear completely unnecessary. So what are the changes to the regulations that the teams are going to have to deal with? There already have been significant changes called in for the next year. Say the number of sprint races will increase from 3 to 6 in 2023. Following the grid penalty chaos at Monza, the governing body decided to refine the grid penalty patterns to help determine the starting positions with fewer complications. There will also be an extra tyre on offer for Pirelli to pick from for each race. The harder tyres in the range have performed poorly this year and are getting changed for next year with an even harder tyre being introduced. In terms of actual technical regulation changes to how the cars are designed, there are a few to consider. To try and minimise the porpoising and bottoming out, the FIA wanted to increase the floor edge's height by 25mm, but it has since been clarified that this has been reduced to 15mm. This was after loud protests from F1 teams who had already dealt with porpoising and were therefore simply able to adjust the ride height lower. There are still questions being asked about why a rule change was pushed through when all the teams had to do to resolve the problem was run their car higher. Mercedes were unwilling to take the performance loss that comes from doing that and therefore forced the FIA into the rule change, something the rest of the grid were very angry about. We've already seen a few teams trying things out to try and get some insight into how the changes to the floor edge height are going to affect them in 2023. In Abu Dhabi, Ferrari used some of the practice time to evaluate a revised floor design, likely as a precursor to changes that the team expect to implement for 2023, which needed real-world data to validate their findings in CFD and the wind tunnel. The revised design centers on changes made to the section of the floor just ahead of the rear tire. The changes will redirect the air that hits the rear tires, probably with the aim of getting more of that onto the diffuser. McLaren went even further than Ferrari with their changes. Their test floor featured a similar edge to Red Bull's. The new floor edge was much more simplistic than their 2022 one. We are expecting these edges to grow in complexity as the 2023 season progresses as they did in 2022. As the teams refine their overall aero design, they find these little improvements which resulted in the very complex, wavy designs that we saw in the back half of 2022. The minimum weight of the cars will go down slightly as well. As minimum weight of 796 kilograms will apply in 2023, down from 798 kilograms in 2022. This change comes after the minimum weight for the 2022 F1 season was revised upwards as the majority of teams struggled to get their car to the weight. The 2022 increase was met with a lot of anger, as Alfa Romeo had to actually add weight to their car to bring it up to the new minimum. During the season, we saw bare carbon fiber across the grid as teams stripped paint to try and lose weight. Expect more of that next year with the minimum weight dropping. Following Zhou Guan Yu's terrifying accident at the British Grand Prix, modifications to the roll bar were deemed necessary after the component proved unable to withstand the impact of the crash and broke off as a result. Luckily, the halo did its job and saved the driver's life, but that doesn't mean the roll bar can't be improved. The parts must be able to withstand heavier loads and be able to withstand an impact of 15 Gs with the ground. Also, from 2023, the roll bar must be able to withstand both forward and rearward forces. Another change in terms of safety will be to the mirrors. 
Wing mirrors are an annoyance for the design teams in Formula 1 because they provide very little advantage to the aerodynamics of the car, but create a lot of problems that need answering. Obviously, when it comes to wing mirrors, bigger is better because being able to see behind you is really useful. The size and position of the mirrors is now fixed, but what they can do is mess about with the housing of the mirror to try and find any advantage they can. Aston Martin tested a new mirror at the Dutch Grand Prix, which shows just how complex the housing can get. Another change that might have less of an effect on the overall speed of the cars is the fuel temperature changes. After fuel temperature issues arose several times during the 2022 F1 season, the FIA decided to make a rule change. Whereas in 2022, the fuel must not be colder than 20 degrees Celsius, from 2023, the temperature must not be more than 10 degrees below the ambient temperature. In cold weather, an overall minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius will apply. The ambient temperature will be recorded one hour before a practice session or three hours before the race by a weather service designated by the FIA. Reducing the temperature of the fuel offers several advantages. Firstly, it reduces its volume, meaning that you can get more fuel into the tank of the car. Secondly, the engines run more efficiently when fed with cold fuel. Things are also going to change during two qualifying sessions next year. As a test, drivers will be required to use specific tyre types during each part of the qualifying session in question. This will reduce the total number of tyre sets allowed during a race weekend from 13 to 11. During the two qualifying sessions in which this test is conducted, drivers will be given four sets of softs instead of eight, while the number of mediums and hards will be increased from three to four. During each stage of qualifying, drivers have to use a different compound. In Q1, it is the hard tyre in Q2 the medium tyre and in Q3 the soft tyre. In a statement released by the FIA, they noted that a test run of reduced tyre compounds at two race weekends in 2023 would be carried out to evaluate the impact of the reduction in tyre allocation on track running, with the overall intention to move to more sustainable use of tyres in the future. This is another step towards Formula 1 being a more environmentally friendly sport. The final big change that we could see in 2023 is the addition of wheel arches to help with wet weather racing. Formula 1's intention is to create a standard specification wheel arches to be fitted to cars for wet conditions, is motivated by the desire to prevent a repeat of the 2021 Belgian Grand Prix farce, the FIA says, left scars on the sport. There have been plenty of questions asked about why Formula 1 doesn't use the wet tyres Pirelli provides. The problem isn't with the tyre or trusting the driver's ability to race. It is the amount of spray that the current generation of Formula 1 cars produce that makes the visibility so poor it isn't safe to race. Past generations of Formula 1 cars have produced nowhere near the same levels of downforce as the current cars, which is why this has only recently become a problem. As the car pushes itself into the track, it displaces the water underneath the tyres, forcing it out and up behind the car, creating a huge amount of spray and blinding the drivers behind the lead car. It is those kinds of conditions that caused chaos at the Japanese Grand Prix this year. The FIA hopes the wheel arches will reduce the spray and improve visibility, and could be ready for introduction as early as the second half of the 2023 season. Once a suitable design has been produced and agreed on by the teams, the intention is to conduct track testing on F1 cars to evaluate their suitability. The FIA believes that they can improve the visibility in wet conditions by 50%, which could see a return of proper wet weather racing. So, while the 2023 regulations might be similar to those of 2022, the small changes we have shared with you could have a huge impact on how the cars are designed for next year. Let us know below what you think will be the biggest change for next year.